In a galaxy that we're currently sitting in, in a time a few centuries past Battletech, but nowhere near as far away as Dune, is the setting of the RPG Traveler. That's Traveler with two L's. The second L is probably there just to piss off autocorrect. So the time has come to review the long-awaited Traveler, one of the oldest and most expansive RPGs in history, and one that has reinvented itself over and over again. I'm Mr. Welch, and today we're musing long and hard at Mark Miller's classic. Traveler is old, like three years after D&D. This makes it easily the second oldest RPG that's still around today. Because of that, there's a ton of supplements for this game scattered across a large number of editions, like over a hundred easy. D&D is the only game that compares to Traveler in terms of quantity of books, though Pathfinder might have caught up with all their modules. Still, if you're a completionist, get ready to miss some rent payments. The biggest choice you have to make is what edition you want to play in, because each setting is in a different time period. The basic premise of Traveler, at least at the start, is humanity is spread across the galaxy galaxy and has established a stable galactic government called the Third Imperium. There's actually three races of humanity called humanity with two eyes. There's the Terran humans called the Solomani, the humans that were seated by the ancient aliens called the Volani, and the humans that have psychic powers called the Zodani. The galaxy is largely left undefined on purpose, with a region called the Spinward March is well defined, but that's mostly left up to you to fill in the blanks. There are other races in Traveler, including countless minor races that are left up to you to decide and design. The other major races include the Varger, which are uplifted Terran dogs that spawned a lot of colorblindness jokes in my campaign. There's the Aslan, which are obviously lion people who are honor-bound and have spawned all sorts of Narnia jokes in everyone's campaign. You've got this flying reptilian droin, the Hivers, which are obsessed with the number of six and are extremely manipulative, and the militant vegan centaurs, the Kakri. Avoid taking the stuttering disadvantage if you're playing one of these in GURPS Traveler. The edition you play largely determines what part of the timeline you're in, and the Traveler timeline doesn't gradually increase. When an edition changes the timeline, it jumps forward or backwards centuries, with the exception of Traveler to Mega Traveler. The original Traveler, created by Games Designer Workshop, or GEW, took place in the Third Imperium, which was largely a peaceful time period except on the distant fringes of the frontier areas. There's some racial conflict between the major races, but all in all, the government works and the people are safe. The one aspect the Third Imperium set forward is there's no FTL communications. If you want news from another system, you have to wait for somebody to bring it to you. This gave the setting one of its most recognizable features, the X-Boat. These were small one-man crafts that just went from planet to planet, picking up and dropping off news items. I say small one-man craft. They later changed the rules so that 100 ton ships, because somebody figured out how to put uh, torpedoes with jump drives and that ruined the entire no FTL communications rule. So see, people have been gaming the system to break it for humorous reasons for longer than I have been. Piloting an X-boat was a lonely job. It was generally a safe one because nobody really wanted to mess with the mail service though. Then Mega Traveler comes out, and the setting fast-forwards to the time of the Imperium's Civil War, when a usurper attempts to assassinate the Emperor and all the heirs and take control of the Imperium himself. This caused a lot of drama back in the day, because while it cleaned up the mechanics from Traveler's rather sparse rules, it turned the beloved Third Imperium into a war zone with more than a few of the original fans, felt that this went against everything Traveler stood for. Traveler was meant to be a well-established galactic government, not just another galaxy at war like so many other settings. Well, if you didn't like what Mega Traveler did to the timeline, then you were apoplectic when Traveler the New Era came out, which introduced one of my biggest pet peeves, the setting nuke. The new Emperor releases a computer virus that goes berserk, because computer viruses always go berserk, and they infect everything from robot robots to spaceships to everything in between, and it starts killing everybody, just like the movie Maximum Overdrive, until a hundred years later when the uh, techies finally put the computer virus down. This kills the Third Imperium until hundreds of years later when the Fourth Imperium emerges from the ashes. But it not only killed the Third Imperium, it killed Traveler. The new era was the end of the timeline. All the following versions are actually prequels, leaving the game on a cliffhanger as there was an apparently a massive psychic storm headed right towards settled space. Fourth edition was written by Mark Miller himself after the death of GDW, and he does admit it was rushed, leading it to be largely forgotten. The edition was set in the beginnings of the Third Imperium, when the galaxy was rebuilding itself after the collapse of the Second Imperium. The book, however, is considered almost unplayable due to poor design, terrible page layout, and overpowered PC starting out right out of character creation. Miller himself has acknowledged these flaws, and this edition is more of a curiosity now. Then the game jumps to Steve Jackson's GURPS line, where all settings will eventually end up before the sun grows cold. It went all the way back prior to the First Imperium when Earth was reaching the stars after it discovered FTL travel and was actually well regarded since many of the people that wrote the initial Traveler setting helped with the GURPS setting. 
Of course, combining Traveler with its expansive past and GURPS with its unhealthy obsession with supplements meant GURPS Traveler was one of the most well-supported of all the incarnations, with almost three dozen books in the timeline before the license finally expired. Then the plague of the D20 supplements came, with the new century, and Traveler was no exception. Set a hundred years before Traveler itself, this was the short-lived supplement that came and went without much fanfare. Traveler set itself apart from D&D by being a stat skill system compared to a class level system. Turning Traveler into a class level system pleased no one. It didn't help the book was a mess, poorly laid out, and with so much errata that the errata could have made its own supplement. The original D20 open license was a plague on gaming, and I am not the only one that's glad it's dead. Unfortunately, it took a lot of good games with it because everybody thought it was going to be the ultimate universal setting, and it most definitely wasn't. So the license passed to Mongoose Publishing, which created their version of Traveler. I don't even know what number to call this edition, so it's just the Mongoose one. It was very well received. It got a ton of support. The rules were a little wonky at times, but they got cleaned up with the second edition of Mongoose. So that eliminated most of the complaints. It keeps with the original tradition of Traveler, meaning mostly hardcore science fiction. It was set in the beloved Third Imperium, and it's written so many book supplements that the game designers are on Ikea's Christmas card list. Seriously, there's over 70 supplements for this version of the game. And lastly, Mark Miller made a comeback with Traveler 5th Edition a few years ago as he poured everything into this version. I mean everything. The new book was beefy, over 600 pages. The newest version he kickstarted broke the book into three different uh, books, but added even more, so the trio, trio of books is over 800 pages total. When you're writing Traveler, go big or go home. The game is not for the laconic. The book was massive, but it might have been too much at once. There's a reason why RPGs have supplements, because coffee table books make for bad DM supplements. Nobody wants to crack open the WWE steroid version of their favorite sci-fi RPG when looking for the rule on whether a scout gets a plus one or a plus two bonus for purifying water. So the new version isn't out yet, so we'll have to see how that's going to turn out, though, in a few months. Okay, I've been talking about just the history of the supplements for five minutes. I'm not even into the meat of Traveler. That's how expansive this game is. If you try to get all the supplements from all the major lines, you're going to be buying a lot of books. If it's over a thousand, I won't be surprised. The lasting attraction of Traveler is that it's just well flushed out, and it's largely left undefined for the Game Master. There's 11,000 star systems at one count, even with the hundreds of systems defined, that's still over 10,000 for you to claim for your own. So it's got something for all types. Because of the mass variety, you can run whatever kind of campaign you want. Mercenaries on the far rim, slugging it out with some newly encountered race is a classic. You can be merchants plying the core worlds, and then there's the always popular scout campaign playing out like No Man's Sky only like it was released on time and without bugs and actually there's no non-boring stuff to do and it was well written but in the defense of No Man's Sky at least it wasn't Fallout 76 Traveler had a reputation for lethality in its first edition the rumors were not wrong you could die in character creation quite easily each term you served there was a chance of death the scouts for some reason had the highest one over the marines or the army Traveler was always about the term system those were four year stunts in your background that gave you some new skills only every four years it gave you an in increased chance of biting it there were some softball rules that on a failed save it just cost you a limb or something similar in exchange for not dying, but diehard Traveler fans preferred the pressure luck approach. First edition Traveler wasn't kind. There were no rules to gain skills or stats. Everything just had to be earned in play. You had to give the GM a reason why something went up. You didn't just spend points and suddenly you learned how to speak Varger. From Mega Traveler to New Era Traveler was very much a stock GDW system with the terms and the dice rolling. While they nerfed the opening lethality, the availabilities of rolls were vastly expanded. You could still die in Mega Traveler, but the odds were much better and the, it only applied to people who really pushed their luck. Mega Traveler was a trade-off with more rules, but much more variety contained in those rules. New Era cleaned up the rules even further, sticking with the universal GDW rules that had been evolved by that point. But the most respected rule set now is Mongoose 2nd Edition, which gives you the added advantage of still being in print. One of the defining characteristics of this setting compared to Starfinder, Alternity, or Star Wars is that Traveler is very hard sci-fi, with the exception of psychic powers and the ancient artifacts left by the long-dead ancients that are just space magic, but those are especially rare space magic. Traveler is defined by its tech levels, where TL0 was a completely undeveloped world in the Stone Age, and TL16 was 
barely conceivable compared to today's technology, but then you had to deal with things like fuel, ammunition when applicable, food, ship parts, oxygen. Combat in space was largely done by computers because you were traveling so fast that only the computer could track and fire at targets, also moving at insane speeds. Yes, you rolled a hit like normal, but it was more telling the computer what to fire at and when. You weren't manning the laser gatling out of the back of your ship trying to drop snub fighters that were probably miles away in reality. The new era version of Fire, Fusion, and Steel was known for being one of the most complicated game supplements ever written. It made GURPS vehicles look like intro to math. One of the defining aspects of Traveler is the relative short range of the jump drive. A maximum range on a drive is only 6 parsecs, which is a little less than 2 light years. A jump of that length takes a couple of weeks, so crossing the galaxy would take almost a thousand years with the fastest FTL drive. It's a quirk of the game that it's actually faster to travel to Alpha Centauri using a jump drive than it is to travel to Pluto with conventional engines. That gives the effect that most of the outer planets in the systems are left unexplored, while there are numerous planets around the stars that have been completely scouted. Speaking of scouting, that's a major aspect of the game. While adventurers, nobles, and military types are a large part of the universe, scouts probably had the most rules and background attributed to them. One of the most iconic groups, the Imperial Intergalactic Scout Service, has a disproportionate amount of books and articles devoted just to them. They not only scout the unknown systems and planets, but they also maintain the mail service, so nobody really messes with them. As you might have surmised, the amount of support from this game is ludicrous. Like I said, if there's not a thousand books published for this game, it's not far from that mark. That's including all the digests, then you've got dozens if not hundreds of articles in Challenger magazine. The game has more background than Star Wars, Star Trek, Dune, Hell, pick any science fiction setting. There's very few settings that it doesn't just flat out dwarf with content. There's a few novels, but more importantly there was a Traveler news feed in every issue of Challenge magazine that kept the timeline updated. The beauty of Traveler is it can be whatever you make it. There's thousands of planets in the Imperium that are left for you to define, from Stone Age to plasma rifles and tractor beams. You can just as easily go from a world that's set in an early Bronze Age where you rule over the populace like gods to the next planet where you are so behind the technology you're looked at as the same way we see Neanderthals. The only restriction on the world is jump fuel, which is fortunately found in any system with a gas giant. The established trade routes are actually all possess a gas giant as their defining trait. A ship might not even travel to the inhabited worlds on their voyage, just stopping by all the gas giants. Another aspect that is left for you to decide is whether the Third Imperium is benevolent, malevolent, or just neutral. The government is a feudal one, with space travel taking weeks to go from system to system. That's the one form that works best with everyone so scattered. Pay your taxes, you get left alone. Don't pay your taxes and expect a visit from the Imperial Navy. Pretty simple. Now, are the taxes fair? Well, that depends on how much of a libertarian you are. In exchange for taxes, if someone attacks your planet, expect the Imperial Navy to show up and defend you in full force or to help you out in case of natural disasters, so you do get something out of it. If you play in different time periods, there's more than a few tyrants that do bring the boot heel down. Just as the same, there are some rulers that turn the Imperium into a true Golden Age. The current Emperor at the time of Traveler was a competent one, all but hands off, so the government was fairly neutral and on autopilot. Goes without saying that Session Zero is paramount in Traveler. Call the theme of the campaign before you roll the dice. You've got a starship. Are you going to be freelancers, scouts, mercs, merchants, or criminals? You can work for an organization like any number of militaries, or you can become spies, or reporters, or imperial investigators. You can stay entirely on a single world, or be constantly jumping from new system to new system looking for lost tech and riches. For fun, go to a TL-16 world, buy a whole bunch of weapons, then fly over to a TL-0 world with feuding primitive clans, and hand both sides plasma cannons, and sell the resulting carnage as a video series. Then probably go to another part of the Imperium, because there's probably a lot of laws against that. If you want to collect all the Traveler, first, let me say that you're insane. Second, that there's cheaper things to invest in, like Corvettes or Fabergé eggs. There's almost ten versions of the game, most of which have multiple books, dozens each. Now, most of these are reprints from earlier versions, but each has added its own unique spin on the setting. If you wanted all of them, you're looking at hundreds of books, many of which are hard to find, especially in the Mag Mega Traveler era. You, then you've got numerous small supplements like Traveler journals, and then you need to grab all the Challenge magazines. Which, if you're a gamer, you need to grab them anyways, because all those things were just too useful. It contained a lot of articles for so many different games that were just works of art. That's Traveler. It's massive. It's old. It's well-developed. It's lethal. It went in a different direction that D&D &D did at the birth of RPGs, and it stayed with that direction for four decades now. It's got fanatical fans, and it's got people just now discovering it. That has to account for something. 
Next time we're going to talk, it's going to be about Mayfair's Underground, the superhero RPG inspired by the dark comic book Martial Law with a dystopian future riddled with dysfunctional superheroes. It's known for an outlook so bleak it made Shadowrun and Cyberpunk look optimistic and a rule system that literally requires advanced math to work. So until next time, remember, I'm not locked in here with you, you're locked in here with me.